Hello, viewers. Welcome to my channel, Sense360 Investor, where we leverage best practices from around the business world, and the companies we invest in, and apply them to the investing process. Investing is complex and has many facets. Here we incorporate a 360 framework to manage the uh, process and uh, align money management to the four bucket strategy. Today, we're going to focus on this equities segment, and we're going to begin looking at uh, equity analysis, in other words, stock analysis uh, for uh, companies that we're interested in long term investing. Uh, before we begin, a quick word on the disclaimer. Uh, remember, this is not financial advice. Please pause, read, and continue at your leisure. Okay, so the stock analysis uh, in this video is going to focus on the ticker Goog, um, companies known as Alphabet, which is the parent company for Google. So we're going to begin with uh, the company itself. You know, as uh, Link Choi says and Buffett says, uh, know what you own. So let's begin here. Okay, so um, this is text taken from Morningstar, but basically it, it gives us a, a nice little concise business description of uh, Alfred Bits uh, business. And as you can see, you know, it's a holding company, intermediate, uh, uh, internet media giant, holy, uh, it's a wholly owned subsidiary. Google generates about 90% uh, of the Alphabet revenue. Uh, this is the other ticker. Uh, most of it comes from the online ads. They have uh, other um, content provision like um, Google Play, YouTube, they have uh, an increasing amount of uh, online tools like um, um, Google Sheets and Google Deck, uh, Docs. And then in addition to that, they'll be venturing out into smart homes. Um, and they're making risky bets with uh, kind of innovative areas like uh, electric cars, which is way more food um, and other technologies like enhanced health. Okay, so a quick word on how it makes money. Again, this is from the same source. Uh, so basically, kind of three or four different areas to focus in on. Yeah, as everybody knows, Google, you know, is is the uh, eight hundred pound gorilla on the online search market. So here we say it's got over eighty percent plus of the, uh, the share. And then it's also got an increasing ecosystem. So this is all its online tools like uh, Google Docs, Google Sheets, that kind of stuff. Uh, and so the more people come to it, the uh, more attractive it is for um, advertising. And so the more um, advertising revenue comes in as a result, uh, more pairs of eyes. And then third, last but not least, uh, Google also uh, investing in other areas, um, but most notably the cloud. It's uh, now trying to make headways against um, Amazon and Microsoft. All right, so uh, you can never um, really understand a company until you also kind of have an appreciation for who's at the helm, the CEO. Uh, affectionately known as uh, the jockey and <clears throat> jockey at Google Alphabet is Sundar Pichai, birthplace is uh, India. And from here we can see his education, uh, IIT, he's got a um, metallurgical engineering degree and then moved to the United States, got a, a master's from Stanford in material science and engineering. And then he went on to get out an MBA from Wharton School. Um, and then key achievements, I mean, most notably, is, I mean, other than working at McKinsey, his most notable achievement and claim to fame was uh, the development of Chrome, especially since there was no backing. And there's lots of stories about how uh, Eric didn't uh, see the need for it, but somehow Sundar Pichai managed to uh, get that product out and, you know, we all know how that changed everything. So let's only have uh, an insightful leader at the top.
Okay, so historical performance. Uh, just a, I, I do want to point out the caveat with the, as we get into the historical performances and the numbers looking back, and also when we get to the projections and the numbers looking forward. And so a couple of caveats here for the numbers looking backwards. The data can vary across data providers. So your, the numbers you may have access to may look a little, little bit different to what's shown here. And there's even um, you know differences within the data set from the same provider. So you know, expecting different data providers to all um, have the same numbers can be a little challenging. So um, one can always just go back to the 10K um, and get the numbers from there, but the 10Ks aren't uh, always um, set up in a way that you can go back far enough and do historical analysis. So that's the caveat. Okay, so let's take a look at some key key trends here. Uh, so I've got the five-year average year, and then with the trend over the five years, and just a few notes as to what's happening more recently. So sales has been, the five-year average on sales is over the five-year period, it's up, um, it's returned 21.86%, the trend is up. Uh, earnings, um, and you'll see different numbers from different providers here. Earnings up 28.5%, five-year trend is up. I didn't pull the cash on this one today. Um, Pre-tax profit margins, uh, which are basically percentage of sales. Five-year average is 24.5, trend is up. ROE, 18.4, trend is up. And debt has actually moved up. So this is actually a negative. So I put this in red. And then, so that's over the five years. But the trend can, as I you know, mentioned on other videos, the statistics and trends can be slightly misleading. It all depends on where you're taking your uh, data points. If we look at more recently what's happening over the, uh, say the uh, trailing 12 months and in, in some of the quarters, then you know revenues are slipping, that's going down, it's contraction there. Earnings uh, have definitely been uh, coming in. And then because those are coming in, the margins have also been contracting. So this is not a good look um, for Google. Whereas, you know, obviously if you just look over here, it looks, looks good with the exception of this rising. But certainly with the kind of the last year, <clears throat> her picture does not look good. Okay, so here we see um, how earnings has kind of tracked. And we can see, you know, earnings has been contracting for a while now. And so this is coming in. And the forecast is that it will, it will continue to um, trough out and until we bottom out in somewhere in 2023 next year before they start to pick up again. and. As I've you know said before, price follows earnings, and we can see as earnings comes in, price has you know done its business of coming down. At some point, this will level out, and price will start to move up. But at the moment, the Google share is uh, locked into a little bit of a downtrend. And then over a five-year viewpoint uh, time frame, we can see it, you know it kind of didn't do much in the early. Uh, 18, 19, and then it really took off after the COVID lows here. So this was a tremendous run. Obviously, uh, all the money printing helped. And then since the peak, it's just been selling off, and now it's coming back into, starting to come back into an interesting zone where it may find um, support and it may start to bottom out, but we'll see how their business does and then how the price follows. Okay, so let's take a look at projected performance. Okay, so we kind of know what Google's done in the past. See so what what do we think it's going to do in the future? And again, um, this is all based on judgments that are made based on uh, assumptions that we know of and uh, facts that may also support future performance. Man, but future business conditions are not known, really known. They're kind of guesses. So the the numbers can change. Um, and therefore, the, the you know the numbers are put into models, and the models put out uh, projections, and so the, they're likely to change as business conditions change. So always bear this in mind, in the both for the historical and the uh, projected. Okay, so uh, looking at the current year, um, so you've got revenues and next year projected. So we're projecting a, a little increase over here. On sales, we're projecting sell. I mean, earnings. We're projecting earnings to come in, 
So this is not good. So maybe whilst uh, sales, we're still kind of getting a slight tick, maybe not enough. But on the earning side, if this is coming in, then this is going to basically suppress the share price. Okay, <clears throat> so let's look at some other factors, the recommendations from the analysts. There are two analysts with strong prices, no strong sales. So this kind of um, skews it, skews the uh, recommendation towards uh, kind of the buy zone. And then if we look at price targets, and I've pulled out different price targets. So the current year, the price target, depending on the date to provide, it varies from the low side to 91 to the higher side is 130. Uh, to kind of uh, 18 months to two years, so you're looking at 134. And the five-year projections are around 255. Valuation. Uh, so I've, I have a number of valuation techniques and models that I use. So I'll try and and so these will vary depending on the type of company we're looking at, but so I'll try and keep these reasonably consistent uh, on the way forward, but uh, these will change depending on what stock we're looking at. So I've, got, I've put in three valuations here. So the first one had a range of 64 to 84. Second valuation came at 85 at the higher end. And the third one came at 68, just below the, the low end. So quite a, it's so not too far. Uh, out from each other, so it's very, so it's, it gives us some reasonable confidence in what we may end up using. Okay, so now onto the business end of this video, just because of this, um, pros and cons, and then we'll look at dispositions. Uh, okay, so analyst sentiment. This is this is the kind of stuff that goes into uh, the models on the if you're on the bullish side. They're going to be factoring in like increasing uses, more digital spend, uh, Android's uh, dominant position, the focus on innovation, so that'll provide future revenue growth. Uh, they have new segments, uh, markets uh, segments that are in, in, um, entering smart home space, wearables, cloud computing, and YouTube, which is you know with all of our videos and, and continues to grow. And then on, on the bear side, um, little revenue diversification within Alphabet. So they're kind of just sticking to their core knitting. Um, they have heavily dependent on the Google uh, on the uh, and, and that in turn is mostly search ad space. Um, they've also got some high risk bets that may not pay off. So it could be money just goes nowhere, no return. Um, their dominant position, which they've enjoyed for decades, is you know there's some erosion as new players come in and then in some countries are trying to uh take down some of their moat and then uh and that's being done through litigation allowing um people to compete with them and internally you know the rising costs of um some of some of these projects and money that they're putting in is putting pressure on margins and there we are falling margins so here's the pros here's the cons all right so let's look at the model side of it so the current price when i uh, cut this video was about 84 and a few pennies over so i'm just going to round it up to uh, all round actually i'm rounding down to dollars the current price is 84 and based on the valuation zone so we got a valuation of between about 64 to 76 in terms of uh, um today and this little widget is pulled from Yahoo, um, and Yahoo has them kind of close to fair value. And this isn't too far off fair value here. Okay, and then so the key question is, you know, based on the current price, based on the valuations and, and the other information, you know, is Google or Google, is it, you know, a buy or a hold or a sell? So if you, and then I'd be interested in what you, what you think. And so if you put a, Put it in the comments. You know, are you a buyer here, a holder here, a seller here? Uh, and maybe you're none of these, and you want to put it on the watch list, or, or you know, this is not a good stock that fits your portfolio, and you're just going to completely pass on it. So, so it would be nice to hear your thoughts and comments on that. All right, as we close out, um, a couple of other things to note with uh, with Google is. That it is a international company with with the uh, inflation rates and interest rates where they're at, uh, the uh, strong dollar. Um, so there are some 
additional headwinds, which I didn't call out specifically because they're more macro, and they will continue to provide a headwind to Google in the near short term. Okay, so if you didn't read the disclaimer, please uh, pause the video and, and uh, uh, read before you um, finish up. If you've read it, thank you. So do, um, if, if you like this video if you, and you're not a subscriber, please uh, subscribe, it helps the channel. And uh, like, share, comment, all of that helps. So that's it for today. Um, Let's wrap up here and I will see you on the next video. Goodbye.